Good morning, everybody. Well, it's morning here. It's 02.39 a.m. in the morning, Okinawa. And I'm back, uh, feeling motivated as always. Got a little coffee, finished the book. Now, uh, after this, I gotta go write some more. It's on that grind, I'm loving it. So today we're gonna talk about home buying for the average person. Okay, what do I mean by average person? Us. If you're watching this, you're probably the average person. I am. I wake up every day early, I wake up every day at midnight, I grind, then I go to work where I grind another eight to 12, 10 hours. I come home, grind some more, and go to bed every single day. I'm average, right? So while I'm grinding is, I'm trying to get above average. Okay, now keep in mind, I make a pretty good wage at my job and the average person doesn't make as much as me okay so only 10 to 13 percent of people make over 100k in the u.s all right so it's tough out there if you're looking at the housing market you understand that it's tough out there okay before i go far further uh this is a free book it's down to my uh on my blog and you can buy on amazon you can buy the paperback whatever you want to do but there's a lot of information in this one, so we got to jump right into it. Okay, now, I've been hearing recently that people think that the housing market is going to crash. It's probably not going to crash. Chances are it's not going to crash. Prices might streamline, right, because price and uh, interest rates are inverse, right? So interest rates are going up. That means price go down. So basically, a person that can afford a $2,000 a month house payment can either buy a really expensive house or a less expensive house with a higher interest rate. So that's what's happening. It's gonna baseline, but is it gonna drop? Probably not, why? There's a lot of investors on the sidelines. All right, so I won't get more into that. I'm actually gonna write an article about that. So maybe I'll talk about that next week. But there's people on the sidelines, including me, that are gonna jump in if there's a 20% drop in the housing market. There's gonna be money all over the place, right? So we might see a baseline, but it's not gonna go crazy. Okay, so the average person, that's us. We wake up, we're just a standard ham and egger. We wake up, we do what we need to do, and then we go to bed. Okay, we don't have a lot of passive income coming in where we can relax, look for deals. That's what we're working on. Now, how can you buy a house? Housing is out, is unaffordable. Your housing should be 35% less or 35% of your income or less. That includes utilities, 35%, not 50, not 60, 35%. So how much do you make? If you make 100K, so that's 35,000 a year on housing or less. Okay, so you divide that by uh, 12, that's 3,000 a month with utilities and maintenance. So that's 2,000. So how much can a $2,000 house payment get you? Interest rates went up, but I just say it's close to three, three fifty, three twenty, something like that. So you're making 100K buying a 320 house. Most people make 100K when a 600 house. So there you go. So this is why we have to do the math. Home buying for the average person. Okay, so this is not going to be nice. Most people aren't going to like this. Most people aren't gonna like these facts, okay? But this is the way it's done. I wish I would watch this video 14 years ago when we bought our house, the first house we have, because it's way too expensive. It's actually pretty, pretty expensive. All right. Okay. First thing, first rule. Now again, these are all in my article, so don't worry about taking notes and everything else. It's all there. As soon as you're done with that, go download this, and you'll be fine. Okay. So everything's out there. Stay out of student loan debt. Okay, if you're watching this and you have student loan debt, pay them off. Go to extreme measures. All right, it's hard to navigate with this extra debt. Same thing with credit cards, same thing with cars. Get out of debt. Okay, trust me, I've been there. I've been married 16 years in America. I understand debt. I've been there. You have to get rid of this debt. Me and my wife reached 77,000 worth of debt 
just by not even going crazy, just from accumulating stuff, just from, you know, kids and moving and everything else in the military. It happens, you know, your cars, you paid all that crap off, it's gone. All right, now we're free. Pay it off. So if you're if you're thinking about getting a degree, if you're younger, uh, read the book Debt Free Degree. Okay, links in the in the article. Read that book. Okay, I read it. Now I'm not looking to get a degree, but I want to understand how to get it. So it goes in depth on how you can prevent student loan debt, or you could join the military if you're young enough. If you're sub 25, military is your best option. I think to get a free education, serve your country, get a trade. And get a house to pay, a house down payment in, in terms of the VA loan. All right, so the military is a great option. All right, do you sacrifice your freedom? It depends on what you consider freedom. I like financial freedom. So military is where it's at. Okay, so I'm a military guy, 23 years in. All right, now stay out of student loan debt. Rule number one. Rule number two, get a great job. Okay, what does that mean? That means climb the ladder. Now, in today's world, the way you climb probably is going from company to company. Build your resume. Now, I read a great book called From Paycheck to Purpose. If you think that you're going to sit there and make 20 to $25 to $30 an hour for the longevity of your career, it's going to be a tough life. All right. Inflation's already you've already seen it. Inflation, your paycheck's going less and less. Right. I don't have to worry about inflation. Yes. I mean, I had to account for it, but my dividends are growing. My book sales are growing. My rents are increasing. OK, so I'm using those to beat inflation. I'm not depending. I'm not going to the U.S. government saying, give me a raise. You know what they're going to say? Wait till next year. Here's your one percent raise. Right. So you have to do things on your own. Now, from paycheck to purpose, the book tells you how to work towards your dream job. Okay, you have to pad your resume. You have to go outside the box. It looks very much like being an entrepreneur or a businessman as you as you politic for your job. You got to go volunteer. You got to ask people to do stuff for free so that you can get their backing. So you can get the experience. It's not easy. To get a great job at a great location at a high pay. It's very difficult. I'm blessed that I worked my way up and now my job's a lot different than it was 23 years ago. All right, where I'm sitting. Okay, but I took 23 years of work in the in the mud, right? So get, get a great high paying job. Okay. Rule number three. Now that you have a great job and you're debt free, guess what? You still have to keep going. It's not enough, right? Now, you have to create something on your off time. Whether a home business or create content. Period. It's not optional anymore. We are now moving into the multiple streams of income economy. Your job, you cannot depend only on your job. Even if you and your wife both have a job, you and your husband both have a job. You can depend on these two jobs. It's not enough. It's not enough. When Johnny comes home and needs $100 for school photos, a yearbook, soccer outfits, it's starting to add up. Even if you grind and save fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, it's slowly going to whittle down. Right? So you need something to keep restocking your income. All right. Every month, my my income is restocked. Right. So every month I look at my account, my dividends are piling up. I'm like, oh, wow. OK, well, I reinvest it and then it's back to zero. And then the next month it comes back in. All right. That's the magic of dividends. Now, for a home business, you could do things like working outside. So I have a whole series on if you want to be like a farmer style homesteading person. Right. You can sell your stuff from your garden. You can sell compost. Okay, you can you can work with bees and honey and flowers and sell that and herbs. There's a lot of stuff. So if you're if you're a nature person, make money, right? Invest it. Okay, online business, Amazon FBA, e-commerce, affiliate marketing, 
yada 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 selling products t-shirts right so there's a lot of stuff that you can do online online is the hardest to get started but it has the most growth exponential growth right there's nothing stopping you okay there's no barriers no time barriers no language barriers okay you just put your stuff out there and it'll grow you just gotta learn it it just takes time okay but it's worth it so if you're starting young age 25 by in 10 years you start this business even if you're making two thousand dollars a month it's huge it's ginormous i'm gonna make potentially probably 130 from my books this month that's 130 dollars not even 130 thousand dollars 130 now think about it i don't need this money at all it hits my account but at this time next year it won't be 130 it'll probably be closer to like 300 500 you see what i'm saying the following year how much is it going to be thousand that's what we, that's the mindset all right it's compounding it's slow but last year i was nowhere close to 130 i was like 25 bucks so now i got 130 dollars in my wallet i'm probably just going to invest it but if i wanted to do something nice i could Hey wife, let's go. Let's go hang out. We got 130 bucks. Let's go. Let's go do something, right? Let's take a take a quick trip down to Biloxi. All right, blow some money, right? So that's that's life. Okay. Now, consulting. Now that you got your good job and you worked your way up, becoming a consultant, right? Even if you tell people how to um, get jobs or what you did. And you don't necessarily need to be in their field, but they still need to know LinkedIn, stuff like that. I'm working with my buddy and he's helping me get on LinkedIn and start that whole process, right? Everything's a process. Start small. Okay. Now, creating content. That's the way I would go. Before I even start a business, I would create content. It's called content first, content marketing, right? So as you grew up to your great job, you learned a lot of things. If you're an engineer, if you work at Tesla, right? If you went to like four jobs and you finally landed at Tesla, you can talk about how you worked your way up. People need to see this. There is no more direct mentorship until you're rich enough to afford it. Right? So somebody who's struggling and starting doesn't have access to a mentor. So how are they going to get there? How is somebody in the in a poor neighborhood in high school going to fathom even getting to work at Tesla? So they might want to hear how you worked at two years of college at the community college, went to a nondescript uh, university, grinded, 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 went back, got your education part time. And then you start, you know, what companies you went to, then you ended up at Tesla in 10 years. They might need to hear that story. Right. So never think that your story is not important. Somebody needs to hear it. There is no mentorship. Think about it. Can your parents mentor you? Can my parents mentor me on how to be a Marine and hit and reach E9? No. Right? But you know who could? An E9. That's life, right? So you're, you're, if you're making it, your story is valuable. Okay? So content's always good. So different contents. Music. If you're musical. And you don't have to be good at a musician. You don't have to be like, this is not just music videos and singing. All right? People still need training on reading keys and, you know, uh, music any of that stuff, right? Just basic stuff, how to hold a violin. There's content all, all over the place, all right? So think big picture. Okay, photos, there's a lot of stuff. Take a lot of photos, you know, ask people to take photos of their wedding, but ask if you can use it for free, but ask them to use it on your stock photos and then create your own stock photo page, right? Stock photos are very expensive. Trust me, I use them every day. Okay, so I pay one ninety nine a year, something like that, for unlimited photos. But most photos aren't unlimited. Okay, most of the time it's like like on Adobe. Adobe, I think it was, you get ten photos a, a month or something. Then you got to start paying per photo. Yeesh. So photography is where it's at. So take a lot of photos. Art. Are you an artist? Can you draw? Can you do anything? Can you do graphic design? Anything. Okay. Create a Facebook group. Start putting your art in there every day and just commit to yourself to do something every day. Before you know it, people will attach in. People will start putting their art in there. 
you have a platform okay can you draw you know can you draw so people can sketch their tattoos out tattoos are huge now all right not necessarily my cup of tea but it is what it is okay so can you put your work towards that there's a lot of stuff okay YouTube video right there's a lot can you make it in YouTube yes yes everybody has a voice 97% of people can't do the work to make it on YouTube you can do even if this is a five minute video per day where you have something new to talk about you could be successful but you have to do it every day that's what I'm saying like right now I'm just laying the framework for my YouTube once a week but when I get serious about it it's gonna have to be once a day for at least six months so right now I got a job unfortunately so I have to wait and put that to the to the back burner for now but I want to get my foot in the door I want to start the process I want to get all you know you got to start you got to suck right so you got to have crappy videos that's a part of life that's why like when I start writing I had crappy articles but you don't get better until you start right and at a certain point you just don't care right you throw your crappy thing out and then somebody laughs at you and say okay show me your video and then they don't have one so you win your crappy video wins right okay audio so podcasting or you can narrate uh audio books stuff like that so there's stuff you can do in audio right podcast okay it takes years to get footing on a podcast right and of course my favorite writing writing to me is the best because it lays the platform for all the rest of them if you can write then you can convert your writing into podcasts into videos okay so writing i think is amazing 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 right so a lot most people don't like to write okay and if your writing sucks keep working on it right so if i can sell books so i sold what i don't know 30 bucks this month something like that i don't have an editor it cost me nothing 95% of authors lose money on their books. I don't because it doesn't cost me anything. I don't have an editor. So if someone is going to read my crappy writing, they can read yours too. You know what I mean? Okay, now, step four. So that was step three. You have to create money on your off time. No, not driving Uber. No, not delivering pizzas. You have to do something that's going to keep growing. That means you have to start the process. It might take years, but it's okay. Just be consistent. You have to make money on your own so that you need something that you can take with you. So as you move between jobs, you have a $1,000 of steady income coming from somewhere else. And when the pandemic part two comes or whatever happens, you already are in that world. You're already na navigating that world. Like if something happened and I lost my job and I got my retirement pension and everything else, then I can go, right, and do my YouTube. I already have eight, six, seven hundred articles, eight hundred articles. I don't even know how many I got. Then I just say, okay, cool. I take an article a day and I create a YouTube video. The groundwork's already laid. I just don't have the time, right? Okay, so. Now, what we're doing is as we're grinding, working our way up in our job, working on our part-time, making our business, creating content, not collecting, accumulating debt, we're saving for our down payment, okay? We're, our aim is to shoot for 50% of our income, if not more. You can save a lot of money if you live below your means. A lot. Most millionaires live below their means. Okay. That's how you accumulate great wealth. You have a high income with low expenses. In between, it's called cash flow. That cash flow, if you don't need it for emergencies or anything else, goes right into investments. Okay, So we can use things like USDC, 9%. So at least our savings is keeping up with inflation. Okay, So we want to put USDC, savings bonds, treasury bonds, all that stuff. We use those, those to safely save for our down payment okay or you could join the military get your VA loan okay there's a lot of different things you can do so USDA has their own no down payment system all right 
So look into that. Now you're gonna be in the middle of nowhere, but again, if you're making online money, then do it. Now, should you be living at home with your parents? Yes. Does it suck? Sure. Do you want a house? Right, life is tough. Make these decisions so you can live the life you want. If you're trying to make 100,000, then your spouse makes 50,000, and then you're trying to get a house that's worth 300,000, you're stuck forever. You're stuck for those 30 years. Life is tough. Trust me, I've been house poor. I wish I wasn't talking from experience. I've been house poor. It doesn't seem like you're house poor until at the end of it, you have a big ball of debt. Uh, we bought our house in 2008. It was At the time, it was the top of the market. We built it from scratch. Got it. It's cool. It's worth a lot of money. My housing allowance in Arizona was 1200 The house payment was 1800 We had 6% interest rate. The house was 300 k But we had you know three acres of land and everything else. On paper, it looked like you can afford it because we had no other debt. Our cars are paid off. Everything else. But then when you navigate out of there, and then we went to Japan after that, then we have this big ball of debt. Where'd it come from? That's it. We weren't we were living at our means, right? You don't see it, it just starts accumulating. You're living at your means. You gotta live below. So I should have bought a house where the payment was probably like nine hundred. Right? Now we got through all that madness. Now we're not doing that. Okay, so now we're like paying $200 out of pocket for our current house. We got roommates, right? That's life. Life isn't supposed to be easy. You're not supposed to have it all up front, right? We weren't gifted anything from the parents, so we had to go grind up. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so save for your down payment. It has to be, I know people talk about, look, I've been married 16 years. I know people talk about lovey-dovey stuff and everything else, but this money has to get right. Your money has to get right. And then you'll be surprised on how much love you can have when you're debt free and you have money in your pocket. When you have $1,000 of dividends in your pocket, which we hit this month, it's easy to be in love. All your bills are paid. You invest four or 5000 to the stock market. You have $1,000 coming back out of the stock market. Yeah, it's easy to be in love. I don't worry about anything. To me and my wife, we just take off and do whatever we want. But 16, 10 years ago, it wasn't like that. Your debt, you're up to your eyeballs in debt. And there's a, a hint of stress everywhere because if something pops, if your car pops, what are you gonna do? AC pops. Guys, I've been there. I'm speaking from experience. Why do you think I could write every day about finances? I've done it. I've done the standard ham and egg or stuff buy the house, be house poor, blah, 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 blah. I've done it. I'm not going back. I promise you that. Okay. Number five, we get the house down payment on paper. It's 35%. We're looking good. We're looking good. Guys, housing is very expensive. Maintenance, new furniture, right? Upgrades, then things at school, your kids are growing up. You think kids are expensive when you're st they're small. No, so they grow up. 200, 300, tutoring, private school, soccer practice, driving back and forth, vacation on spring break, blah, 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 blah. Now, you can put all that on debt, have fun. Work till you're 70. Have fun. I'm out. At 48 or less, I'm out. Me and my wife are both out. Completely. In total. In full. Completely out. If I jump back in the workforce at age 48, it's to pay off another house. But at 48, I have a million dollars and the house paid off. I'm out. I'm done. And I started late. If this is finding you and you're young, take it seriously. People are going to say, hey, I read a book called Be Obsessed or Be Average. When you start focusing on your money, everybody's going to turn on you. 
But here's a hint. You have to focus on your money. You have to be literally obsessed. It should be the top of your mind every single day until you're rich and you have the money coming in. And trust me, those days will come and then life is very, very different. But everybody's going to turn on you. They're going to say things like, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm good with my money. All you do is talk about money. Yes. What are you supposed to talk about? If you're worried about what the politician is going to do, what your race, what's going on in your different race or ethics or ethnic background and what they're doing and all this other stuff, have fun. They want you to focus on that stuff. Get your money right. Period. So anyway, so number five, you still have to house hack, rent rooms, do something more. Do not sit in this big house and let it eat you, consume you alive. It will. It's going to slowly consume you. That's what houses do. Me and my wife just paid, what, 5K to knock down some trees? Right, we have three acres of land in Florida. We have a lot of trees, so we some of them are rotting out, termites and all the other stuff. So better to knock them down before they fall down on the house, right? So 5K, that was earlier this year. Now, roof, air conditioner units, carpet, flooding, Hot water heater. Man, I mean, we, last year we had like the AC guy come out like five times because the piping was wrong and the water wasn't draining. And, the, you know, the AC would like fill up the little, like in, if you live in a humid area, like right? So then the water gets back backlogged and the AC turns off. It came out three times and then we had to redo the pipe to like let it out the house, the water out the house. That was like, what, in 2020 we bought the house, our third house. There's a squirrel in the attic, 2K, $2,000. Get the squirrel out, catch it, and then prevent it from going back in there. People, your house will eat you alive. Don't be fooled. If you have a house, you need to have at least 30 to 50K in the bank so you can be safe from emergencies. If you don't have any emergencies, keep investing. But you have to have a game plan for your $8,000 AC that goes out, your $10,000 to $15,000 roof, it's going to slowly consume you if you just sit on it and you're not going to be happy. All right. So now the moral of the story. So I have my five steps. Stay out of debt. Get a good job. Start a home business. Create content. Number four, save for a down payment. Number five, rent rooms, house hack. Do something. Do something in your property. That can be, you know, get a storage shed. Rent that out. Whatever it is. Rent out your parking space. Rent out your garage. Whatever it is, make more money. Don't stop ever. It never stops. Because at some point, the money you make has to go towards your kids. Their down payment. So they don't have to do what you're doing. Moral of the story is live below your means. Period. I know it's not sexy. I drive a Ford Focus 2012. You know what? I'm the happiest person in Ford Focus. You know why? Because I have 220 plus thousand dollars in the bank. And I have three houses. And I have a business. And I got dividends coming back into me. Right? So I drive my little Ford Focus. I'm chilling. I'm chilling hard. Comfortable. I'm good. Right? I'm just getting started. I'm only 41. Right? So who do you want to be? The guy in the four focus with dividends and all this money coming in and everything else? Or do you want to be the guy or the gal in the in the Range Rover? Right? 80K car. And then they're struggling. So just think about it. You can get a Range Rover one day. Me and my wife can easily afford a Range Rover right now. But that's not that's not what we're trying to be. So get there, get your money right. So download the, the article, the book, buy the paperback if you like it. If you want to share the message, you know, get it for somebody else. 
whatever, whatever. But it's it's a tough pill to swallow. Look, we've been lied to. We've been lied to. We've been told, work your way from an eighty thousand to a hundred thousand dollar job, and life's gonna fall into place. It's not. You have to go to extreme measures. Unless your parents gave you two rental properties and a $500,000 dividend portfolio at age 25, you have to grind. Period. No ifs, ands, or buts. This is not even trying to make it in Cali or New York. This is a standard Florida, Alabama life. All right, so... Um, it's a tough message. All right. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm a writer. But sometimes uh, video can uh, reach different people differently, right? So everybody learns differently. But if you want to be successful, you have to read a lot of books. Anyway, I rambled on. I enjoy the stuff. It's early in the morning. I got a little coffee in me. Anyway, I will see you next time. Thanks.